The days are as short as they come, the garden has frozen over multiple times and right now there isn't much to do outside in the garden. So this is the time of year when I do all of my planning for the year ahead, including deciding which seeds I'll be sowing. However, I'm definitely not known for being tidy and my system for organising seeds is rudimentary to say the least. So while I go through last year's seed packets and put them in this fancy case, I'm going to share with you my all-time favourite varieties that I'll be growing again this year. While I normally spend a ton of money on seeds, this year I'm going to try and use up as many old seeds as I can. Let's start with the peppers, and I'm talking about the spicy kind. Last year I think I found a new favourite chilli pepper. It produced an outstanding number of fruits and they tasted great, no matter how ripe they were. Right the way through from a greenish yellow through to a bright red. This variety is the Hungarian hot wax. It's not particularly spicy, but two or three is enough for a chili or a burrito and they store really well. You can sow the seeds in February and if you leave them by the window, they'll do just fine until it's time to harden them off in the spring. Last year, I planted mine out in the second week of May and simply left them to it. I didn't do any pruning or anything at all to them really, but I still had more than enough to eat throughout the summer. Also on the list of chilli peppers again this year is Cayenne, because this variety is a super producer. And I'll also be growing Portugal again because they grow really well here and they have one of the best flavours for a hot pepper. This year I'm not putting much energy into sweet peppers. They don't produce anywhere near as well as the chilli peppers do. But I'll grow a few Corno de Toro Rosso, which are the classic sweet Romano pepper. And it looks like I'm all out of chilli peppers, so Unless anyone has any other suggestions, I probably won't be growing any more. Let's talk tomatoes. In case you haven't met me yet, tomatoes are my one true love. And as such, I've already started growing my tomatoes indoors. I'm making a video about the setup behind me, which will be coming your way soon. But while we're here, let's give a shout out to the Sun Gold Tomato. This is my all time favourite tomato because it produces so well and so early. This year they were the first seeds to germinate, they were about a day ahead of the rest and if all goes well I should get a crop of golden cherry tomatoes by June or July. Depending on your setup you can sow tomato seeds now through to the last frost but I find the middle of February is pretty perfect here in the east of England and Valentine's Day is supposedly the traditional day to sow tomato seeds in Italy. Quickly running through the rest, I've got Costa Luto Fiorentino, which is my favourite beefsteak tomato, Black Cherry, which I've not grown but is a great colour, and Tigerella or Mr Stripey, which just looks awesome. I've not grown the last two before, so I might have ordered those two online. Yeah. There are a lot of varieties that I'm going to be growing this year, but I'm being hyper selective with this list. These are just the ones that I'm most excited about. I'm not going to talk about things like celery, which I don't enjoy, or varieties that I don't really like, or crops like peas, because I've not found my variety yet. However, last year I was delighted to have found a climbing bean which grows well in my clay soil and produces very tender pods. Oh, and this one is purple too. The variety is called Brunhilde. You can sow beans under cover from April onwards and transplant them after there's no more risk of frost. Or you can wait until after the last frost date and directly sow them where they'll grow. And to finish off the tray, if you're after a courgette or a zucchini, then I really enjoyed Gold Rush. This one is yellow and I think it tastes fruitier than other varieties, although maybe that's all psychological. It didn't suffer from powdery mildew and it produced non-stop last summer, so I'll be sowing this one again in April. I'll also sow more rockets or arugula and I'll sow a batch now indoors under grow lights and again outside in the spring. Another plant that you can direct sow is sweet corn and last year I tried glass gem, which is a multicolour variety. Bright lights and fireworks are both fine varieties of Swiss chard, which I'll keep growing a lot of because my chickens seem to be addicted. And to maximise how much food we grow, we mustn't forget about the flowers. I'll be adding Carmen to my list of marigolds to grow each year, and I'll keep on growing sunflowers like Evening Sun and Red Sun to improve pollination 
and reduce the pest impact on your garden, it's important to do things like this to support the many beneficial insects, including ones which eat aphids and other pests. If you want to employ passive pest control methods like those, then now is the ideal time to start planning out what strategies you want to use, like the ones I talk about in this video here. But it looks like my sea collection is finally packed away and organized into these fancy cases. So until next time, happy gardening.